Welcome to Spiritual Calisthenics. Christ is in our midst. Today, on Monday, October 2nd, we commemorate the Holy Higher Martyr, Cyprian, and the Holy Virgin Martyr, Justina, as well as St. Theophilus the Confessor. Regarding Saints Cyprian and St. Justina. St. Cyprian was a pagan and native of Antioch. From his early childhood, his misguided parents dedicated him to the service of the pagan gods. From the age seven until he was 30, Cyprian studied at the leading centers of paganism, on Mount Olympus, in the cities of Argos and Theropolis, in the Egyptian city of Memphis, and at Babylon. Once he attained eminent wisdom in pagan philosophy and the sorcerer's craft, he was initiated into the pagan priesthood on Mount Olympus. Having discovered great power by summoning unclean spirits, he beheld the Prince of Darkness himself, speaking with him and receiving from him a host of demons to serve him. After returning to Antioch, Cyprian was revered by the pagans as a prominent pagan priest, amazing people with his ability to cast spells, to summon pestilence and plagues, and to conjure up the dead. He brought many people to ruin, teaching them to serve the demons and how to cast magic spells. The Holy Virgin, Justina, lived in Antioch. After turning her own father and mother away from the era of paganism and leading them to faith in Christ, she dedicated herself to the heavenly bridegroom and spent her time in the fasting and prayer. When the young man, Agladius, proposed marriage to her, the saint refused, for she wished to remain a virgin. Agladius sought Cyprian's help. He said that he would arrange for Justina's heart to become filled with lust for the young man. No matter what Cyprian tried, he accomplished nothing, since the saint overcame all the wiles of the devil by prayer and fasting. There is one such story that he concocted a love potion, and when Agliathus put it into uh, Justina's food, of course, as a Christian, she did her cross, she prayed before she ate, and of course, the wiles of the enemy came to naught. Uh, this is another example in which it's good for us to always pray, praying over our food. Because we do not know uh, what uh, prayers have gone over them or what things have been done to them. Uh, when we bless our food, we are asking God to bless everything about them. Cyprian sent an unclean spirit to attack the Holy Virgin and to arouse carnal passions in her. But she overcame them by the power of the sign of the cross and by fervent prayer to the Lord. Even though one of the demons and Cyprian himself assumed various guises by the power of sorcery, they were unable to influence St. Justina, who was guarded by her firm faith in Christ. All the spells were dissipated, and the demons fled at the mention of Justina's name. Cyprian, in his rage, sent down pestilences and plague upon Justina's family and upon the entire city, but this was thwarted by her prayer. The sorcerer brought tribulation not only upon Justina and her family, but upon the entire city as well. Rumors spread that the city was being punished because Justina would not wed Aglaius. Several people went to her and demanded that she marry Aglaius, so the Cyprian would not punish them with more afflictions. Justina calmed them and assured them that soon the misfortunes which Cyprian caused with the help of the demons would end. St. Justina prayed to God. The power of the demons were destroyed and everyone was healed of their illnesses and afflictions. People began to praise Christ and to mock Cyprian and his sorcery. Convinced that the devil was powerless against the sign of the cross and trembled at the name of Christ, Cyprian came to his senses and realized that he had been corrupted by becoming a sorcerer and participating in the very sorcery and wickedness, doing harm to others and deceiving them. He killed many with his spells and potions, and he murdered many men and women as sacrificial offerings to the demons. He was already a partaker of the portion of the demons, and if he had died at that moment, he would have been cast into the depths of hell. The Lord, however, in his infinite compassion, saved him from the abyss. St. Cyprian saw that the devil, whom he served, was afraid of Christ. The evil one admitted that he was unable to conquer the maiden because he was afraid of a certain sign upon her. If you take fright at even the mere shadow of the cross, and if the mere name of Christ makes you tremble, said Cyprian, then what will you do when Christ himself stands before you? The devil then threw himself upon the pagan priest and attempted to beat and strangle him. The first time, St. Cyprian tested the power of the sign of the cross and the name of Christ, guarding himself from the fury of the enemy. Afterwards, he went to the local bishop Anthimos in profound repentance, threw all of his books into the flames. The very next day he went into the church and did not want to leave it, even though he had not yet been baptized. 
by his efforts to follow after righteousness, St. Cyprian understood the great power of faith in Christ, making up for more than 30 years of service to Satan. Seven days after his baptism, he was tortured as a reader on the twelfth day, subdeacon, and on the thirteenth, deacon. After a year, he was ordained a priest. Shortly after this, St. Cyprian was elevated to the rank of bishop. According to some tellings of this story, uh, St. Cyprian understood that his, that his uh, relationship with Christ was hinged with St. Justina. And so there are some stories that uh, say that he sent demon after demon after demon to Justina's house. The, because of Justina's prayers, the lesser demons were not even able to find her, and the greater demons were not able to tempt her. And when an archdemon came and was able to get into her house and put his hands upon her to try to rise up lusts inside of her, she prayed even further, and the demon came back, reported to St. Cyprian that it was as if he was touching fire. He could not touch her. Uh, and so St. Cyprian, who had pledged himself to Satan, believed that he would rule with Satan when he died, that when he eventually died, that he would rule as a prince of hell himself. And of course, this was revealed uh, as a lie by the devil. And so there are stories that say that before he went to the bishop to be baptized, that he went on his knees to St. Justina begging forgiveness for everything that had happened, and that she was the one that directed him to go to the bishop uh, to receive instruction. St. Cyprian converted so many pagans to Christ that in his diocese no one was left to offer sacrifice to idols, and the pagan temples fell into disuse. St. Justina withdrew to a monastery and was chosen as its superior. During the persecution against Christians under Emperor Diocletian, Bishop Cyprian and St. Justina were arrested and brought to Nicomedia, where after horrible tortures they were beheaded with a sword. St. Cyprian, fearful that the Holy Virgin's courage might falter if she saw him put to death, asked for time to pray. St. Justina inclined her neck and was beheaded first. After seeing the torments of St. Justina, a soldier named Theokistos fell at Cyprian's feet and declared himself a Christian, and he was beheaded with them. The higher martyr Cyprian, the virgin martyr Justina, and the martyr Theokistos suffered for Christ in Nicomedia at the year 305. The relics of St. Cyprian and Justina are to be found in various places around the world. One of St. Cyprian's feet is in Iveron Monastery on Mount Athos. A piece of St. Cyprian's skull is in the church named for these saints at Menikos Nicosia, a small piece of St. Justina's skull is there as well. Fragments of the holy relics of St. Cyprian and Justina are in the monastery, which is dedicated to them and Philae in Attica. The head of St. Justina is located in the monastery of Panagia Anakrantu, the All Holy Theotokos, on the Greek island of Andros. Part of the hand of St. Cyprian is located in Lazari Gij, the church, in Bucharest, Romania. St. Cyprian and uh, Justina are the patron saints against black magic. And I always find it interesting uh, that they are placed at the beginning of October. Uh, this is long before any of these traditions of uh, Halloween came to be in the zeitgeist of uh, Western civilization. But I always love pointing to these saints uh, during this time because oftentimes when we see in movies and stories, we see that evil always wins, that the, that the good never, ever triumphs. And the reality is that's just not true. And we see in the story of uh, St. Cyprian, who is very much a horror story, uh, we see this, this wizard, this, this like a warlock, uh, and he is offering blood sacrifice. He's doing every evil possible thing, and it seems like there's no hope. And yet, Christ conquers. And it's not only that St. Justina was delivered from the afflictions that Cyprian was trying to wring on her and her family, but he himself was saved. That is the nature of Christianity, where the enemy, man is not our enemy, is saved. And so we look to St. Cyprian and St. Justina, and we ask for their helps. We ask for their defense against curses, against cathares, um, against black magic, because people do try to worship the evil one and garner favor with him. But the reality is that as strong as these quote-unquote things are that are out there, whether it's voodoo or witchcraft or whatever, they have no power over Christ. That when we are faithful to Christ, that he is our shield, he is our bastion, and that any type of evil that someone would try to malign is pointless. And so when we are immersed in Christ, as St. Paul says, it's no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me, then we are as the demons when they try to approach St. Justina. We are like fire. They cannot approach us. They cannot touch us. And so it is very, very important that we remember that we pray. 
We don't look at these things as, as fantasy and, oh, that's poppycock. No, the, there, there is evil in the world. We've seen this in the Old Testament. We see this in the New Testament. Uh, there is evil. There are people that sell their souls to the demons and are able to do certain things. But they are powerless against the, the power of Christ. And we forget that sometimes. So it's very, very important that we turn to saints uh, like St. Cyprian and St. Justina and remember that Christ is all-powerful. Christ is for us. And as St. Paul says, if Christ is for us, who can be against us? Those who celebrate today, Kronopola. As a share of the ways and a successor to the throne of the apostles, O inspired of God, thou foundest discipline to be a means of ascent of divine vision. Wherefore, having rightly divided the word of truth, thou didst also contest for the faith, even unto blood, O higher martyr Cyprian, intercede with Christ our God that our souls be saved. When thou, O godly minded one, had been converted from magic art to the knowledge of God, thou became as the most skillful healer of the whole world, O wise Cyprian, granting cures to them that honor thee with Justina. With her, pray the man befriending master to save us, thy servants, who sing thy praise. From St. Paul's first letter to Timothy. Timothy, my son, I thank him who has given me strength for this, Christ Jesus our Lord, because he judged me faithfully by appointing me to this his service though I formerly blasphemed and persecuted and insulted him. This, of course, is showing us that just as St. Paul received mercy despite the fact that he blasphemed God by persecuting and killing the Christians, the same is, can be found in St. Cyprian in his repentance. But I received mercy because I acted ignorantly in unbelief, and the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. And this we see in the life of St. Cyprian, in that all the people were brought to Christ in his region. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And I am the foremost of sinners, but I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who are to believe in him for eternal life. Meaning that we look to people like St. Paul, we look to people like St. Cyprian, because they were failures, they were evil, they were doing wrong, in ignorance because the devil tricks us. But because of God's mercy and repentance, these people become our example And I am the foremost of sinners, but I receive mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience for an example to those who are to believe in him for eternal life. The King of kings, of ages immortal, invisibly, the only God, to, to the honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. In the Gospel according to St. Luke, the Lord said to the Jews who came to me, him, Woe to you that are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you that are full now, for you shall hunger. Woe to you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when men speak well of you, for so their fathers did to the false prophets. But I say to you that here, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To him who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from him who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And of him who takes away your goods, do not ask of them again. This, referring to the, again, the golden rule of give, don't just sit there receiving. Don't be in the silver commandment way of passivity, saying, oh, don't do unto others as you don't want to do. Do good. Even if no one is going to thank you, even if somebody hits you, give the other cheek. And so we are asked as Christians to be sacrificial. In the same way that Justina and Cyprian sacrificed themselves for the love of Christ, we also are asked to sacrifice ourselves. And as such, we will receive true reward. I hope that you've enjoyed today's spiritual calisthenics. Have a blessed and wonderful day.